Well, today my conversation is with Sonia Hollins, who is an award-winning journalist, activist, author, and teacher. Thank you so much for talking with me here today. Thank you for having me. This is amazing. So, you know, in, in researching you and reading about you, you seem like a really curious kid. So <laughs> tell me about what your childhood was like growing up. Oh my gosh. So at my grandmother's house, that was the gathering place for all of us kids. And she would get like Ebony and Jet magazines that would come in the mail. And I remember us always looking at those, getting together at the table to see who was in, inside the, the magazine, the famous people, the athletes. And I remember my cousins always saying, I want to be like that. I want to be famous. And I was always the one who wanted to interview those people. I'm like, how cool would that be to actually meet all these people and share their stories for people to read. So that inspired me when I was a kid and I didn't even know the word journalism really. I just knew I wanted to interview people and travel and share these stories um, of amazing people. That, that was what my, my passion was. And so my grandmother gave me a typewriter when I was in fourth grade and I learned how to type. And you know I was always the class journalist or I was in the yearbook committee and the newspaper committee at school and you know, editor in college and, you know, all that type of thing in, in my school newspaper. So journalism became a part of me and my way to say, I can tell these stories, I can share adventures in people's worlds through media. And I remember in reading about you, I think it was 2008 that you founded uh, the Mers Tate Explorers, right? And I have been fascinated, like I started reading about Mers Tate, how, we not, how have we not heard about Mers Tate, right? Right, right, amazing woman. I learned about her when I was a reporter at the Kalamazoo Gazette. And because I love telling people's stories and, and I love history, I did a story on the first African-Americans of Western Michigan University. And Merce Tate was the first African-American woman to receive an honorary uh, alumni award. And I thought about who is this woman and why did she receive this honor? And I learned that she not only graduated from Western in 1927 with the highest academic record in the school's history, but she was the first black graduate of Oxford University in England, was a Fulbright Scholar in India, traveled the world twice, was a bridge champion, an inventor, uh, left over a million dollars to Western. She was an international po political writer. And I'm like, whoa, and this is a Michigan woman, you know? So I was just fascinated with her story and her, her scrapbooks of her world travels. And one picture that really stood out to me was a picture of her with some kids like in 1931, 1932, they were going to Washington DC on Easter Sunday. And they had this banner that said travel club. And because she was a history teacher, her goal was to teach these African-American students at Chris Addicts High School about the world they were learning through in the history books. And so that picture of these kids stuck with me. And I said, how cool would that be to have a travel club? You know, where you taught kids different about different places and geography, and they met interesting people along the way, and and that's how the travel club began. In your explorers club, tell me some of the places that you've taken taken the kids. Well, it's funny because when we first started in 2008, I, I had this article in the Gazette <laughs> saying if any girl wants to travel the world, and you know, as a travel writer, join this club. And we had these girls show up. It was 12 girls who showed up. Uh, back then it was East Hall um, was where we were met in the archives there and this old dingy East Hall and you know they were thinking we're going to travel all over the world but basically we traveled around our community first we went to ladies library we did ice skating you know we went to Detroit to the Motown Museum so we kind of started off in little increments but we always had travel games and geography and learned about landmarks around the world and so today we've actually gone to back to Japan we've gone to Europe Italy Hawaii, a lot of the places that Merce Tate has gone and written books about. So we, we're following her footsteps in a way. Sonia, can you tell me how art and storytelling kind of work together? You know, that's funny because when we talked about my passion earlier through the Ebony and Jet magazines, that's media. You know, media is a story. And so as travel writers, that's what these girls are, they're writing about the places that they go and the people that they meet. And they're creating their own magazines to tell their stories. So that's where media comes in. They're taking the photographs, you know, the places that they're traveling to, you know, when they're going to Washington, D.C. and they're, you know, making videos based on the places that they're going. I mean, they met Ruth Carter, the first African-American to get an Oscar for costume design for her work in Black Panther. 
you know, so that's art. You're meeting all these amazing people who are, you know, in, you know, using art and creating art. And not only are they creating magazines, but they're creating video, you know, to, to share with their peers and with their communities. You know, so that's media, that's art. And for our organization to be an educational organization, it also is heavy, heavily relies on media and arts to tell stories. What do you think about, like, when you have someone like Merce Tate, Benjamin Losford, Albert White, Enoch and Deborah Harris, the Phillips brothers, what is it that they had that allowed them to press through? What was oh it? God. You know, I think it was, what is your choice? What is your alternative? If you don't succeed, what will happen? And not only to yourself, but to your people. And I think when they were doing things, it was more than just about themselves. They were looking at how do I keep my, my generation behind, the generation behind me inspired. And, you know, someone said before, if you climb the glass ceiling, you're going to get hair in your, you know, glass in your hair. You know, they weren't afraid to, to break those glass ceilings for us, for yeah. us to be able to stand on their shoulders. And I think they were very brave back in those days to, to go off on our uncharted waters, so to speak, and, and do things that had never been accomplished by African-Americans. I mean, so many things that had been accomplished by us was during slavery, and we didn't get any credit for that. So after slavery, it was just boldness. They had that boldness, like, this is our time. We can prove that we are educated. We are smart. We can do amazing things. I love this quote. I kind of, I, I, I have a book as well. I love his quote. Once a mind has been expanded, it's hard to go back to where it was. And yeah, that, yeah that's Oliver Wendell Holmes, you know. Okay, okay. Yeah, I saw that yeah, quote, I I, and it's true, it. right? But I mean, yeah. there's so many stories to be told now. Yes, so it's so many stories. And, you know, when we take our girls to places like Whirlpool and they're meeting with the women vice presidents, you can't not take that back. You cannot tell a woman, she can't be a vice president when you've seen her in a room full of women vice presidents at one of the major corporations in the world. You know, when you're expanding the minds to the possibilities, you know, that's our tagline, exploring possibilities. You cannot go back to saying, I can't do that. Or how you, you say either I'm going to do it or I'm going to be the first to do it, you know, because you've had these other strong role models that you're learning about and seeing along the way. And, you know, when I was going to introduce you, I was going to, you know, sing all your accolades, but it would have taken the whole show. So um, uh -oh. we'll talk about the most <laughs> recent one. You're, you're getting an award from the Arts Council coming up here, right? Yes, that was amazing. And I, I, it was supposed to be um, presented last fall, but with COVID, they wanted to have some kind of ceremony. So I still don't know who nominated me for this award. They won't tell me, but the event, it comes up in April and they will um, recognize me for the work I've done with youth in the community. Well, Sonia, it's been so much fun talking with you today. Thank you so much for giving me some of your time. I know you're a busy lady, so I appreciate it. Hey, well, thank you for having me. Always happy to share about Merce Tate and, and then how these girls are doing amazing things. We've had our own girls have been Fulbright scholars, you know, so they're learning and learning from Merce Tate's legacy and making their own paths as well. So just thank you for allowing me to share the story. Support for Kalamazoo Lively Arts is provided by the Irving S. Gilmore Foundation helping to build and enrich the cultural life of greater Kalamazoo.